Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome, and welcome to those who are not often with us. Very warm welcome to you. This week is a difficult week in swaddling coat, especially on Tuesday, when the funeral of the young man who was murdered a few weeks ago, Ben Orton, takes place. And as you've been reading the newsletter, you'll know that uh, I promised those people in, in Swaddling Coat, uh, and especially those most affected by that murder, uh, that we would surround them with prayer at this service, at morning prayer on Tuesday. And I'll come over here at 1.30, I think it is, on Tuesday lunchtime to pray uh, before the candle stand and so on. You're welcome to join me if you care to at that time. So that, that whole event is surrounded by prayer. Not only that the funeral itself may go well, but the, those ripples of, uh, well, there was some violence afterwards as people reacted to that murder. And we hope that there won't be that sort of reaction on Tuesday within the greater community, but we'll surround it with our prayer and ask God to shine his light upon them, as we'll do now as I light the Paschal candle uh, on their behalf. Heavenly Father, as we light this candle, may your light not only shine in our midst, but among those in Swaddling Coat and beyond, affected by that grievous murder. And we pray for Tuesday and for that funeral to take place, that all may go well, as well as it can, and that your peace may reign throughout Swaddling Coat on that day and afterwards. And we pray for reconciliation among those families most affected. In Jesus' name, amen. And as last week, we can sing. So please stand to sing our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. gathered as God's people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. We acknowledge why we are here. We have gathered together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit and strengthened by sharing God's gifts, we may give ourselves to the service of God and all people. Amen. Please be seated or kneel. We have gathered together to do many things. One of those we have said is to seek forgiveness of our sins. So let us pause for a moment and consider our unworthiness and our sinfulness before joining together in the confession. And we confess together as we say, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, revive your church in our day and make her holy, strong, and faithful for your glory's sake. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. reading this morning is taken from the fourth chapter of St. Paul's Apostle to the Ephesians, the first 16 verses. Paul paints a picture of the church community looking to God for its nurture and to Christ who is the head and from whom every needed gift comes. The sustenance for God's people in Paul's vision was by way of gifts, gifts ministers anointed by God. I therefore the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Christ is the King, O friends rejoice. Hymn number 165, and we omit the second and the third verses. Let's stand to sing.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were at the place where Jesus had given the bread, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do? to perform the works of God. Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit down. I'm going to pray a verse from the hymn, Break Thou the Bread of Life, slightly adapted. You are the bread of life, O Lord, to us. Your holy word, the truth that saves us. Give us to eat and live with you above. Teach us to love your truth, for you are love. Amen. I wonder how much you followed the Olympic Games this week. I must admit I've really only caught up with the bits on the news rather than watching any of the special programs. But even so, I wonder if you, like me, have felt the excitement of those who've won gold. Thankfully, quite a few. Or even silver and bronze. And I don't think we could miss the strength of the support from their team and their family and friends back home. The other week, I watched the story of Helen Glover. I don't know if any of, uh, of you saw that, the, the rower who was returning to rowing after the birth of her son and then twins, having rowed in the last Olympics, but then taken four years break. It was good to see how she and Polly Swan coped with coming forth this week rather than winning a medal. Her reaction was, the reward is knowing that we crossed the line, giving it our all. The frustration would have been coming away from it, thinking we had more, and we didn't. People look for fulfillment in life in many places, don't they? An Olympic athlete is spurred on by their hunger to succeed, to be the very best. And that's all well and good in its place. But I'm sure each one of them would say how much they needed other people around them. Some of the Olympic events are very individual. 
But even in them, each athlete is supported and encouraged by the wider team. Each one depends on trainers, nutritionists, physiotherapists, coaches, as well as the backing of their family and friends. We've heard about that a number of times this week. If you take Tom Dean's mum in Maidenhead or Marlow, wherever, as an example. Any athlete who just seeks success for themselves and fails to recognize the wider community of which they're a part is not following the spirit of the games. Our reading from Ephesians chapter 4 is all about a team effort. As Christians, we've been called to be part of God's team. And just as a rowing eight or a hockey squad need to work together, we have to maintain our unity by being humble, gentle, and patient with one another, as that reading began. And for each member of the team, continual training and development is necessary. We can't think we've made it and sit back and do nothing. Paul wrote about how God equips and gives us people to help build up his team, the church. He likens it to the body, but for the moment we'll continue with the idea of a team. Every member of God's church team has a part to play. Paul particularly mentions those with different gifts of leadership, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. But just as trainers and nutritionists in a sports team don't actually compete, the role of our leaders isn't to do all the work themselves, but to equip each one of us to play our part in the team, using the gifts each of us has been given. And there are more lists of gifts in others of Paul's letters. Martin's been writing about this sharing as a team for some weeks in the news sheet. The key thing is that each one of us looks to Jesus, the team leader, as it were, to find out what our part is. Some will be more up front, others more in the background. For some, their key role may be to pray from their homes, just as encouragement from friends back home has meant a lot to competitors in Tokyo. We've heard a lot this week about Simone Biles and also Ben Stokes, the cricketer, and like them, it may be that some in the church need to have time out in order to restore physical or mental health. But the support of the rest of the team for them is needed so that they can find their active place in due course. The image of a team or body teaches us several things. We all need each other. No one can go it alone. Secondly, we all need to play our part, not leave it to everyone else. We need to value and support one another. And in doing that, we will feel each other's pain and hurt. I'll just repeat those. We all need each other. No one can go it alone. We all need to play our part, not leave it to everyone else. We need to value and support one another. And we will feel each other's pain and hurt. In a team, there will be someone or a group who manages it all. If we move from the team picture to Paul's use of the body analogy, Paul says that the head of the body, from which every part of the body is directed and energized, is Jesus Christ. It's vital that each part of the body is in tune and responsive to the head. We need balanced growth, every part of the body functioning in its correct way. Otherwise, strain is put on some parts and growth doesn't really happen. I'm sure we can think of that in our own bodies when one part goes wrong. It's even more relevant in the body of Christ. It's important to realize that we're talking about something really special here. 
We need each other in the church, not just to be a welcoming club, not just to get all the jobs done, which can become a danger in our thinking and planning, but to be Christ's body here on earth. That's an amazing truth, that we are Christ's body here on earth. Not just us, of course, Christians everywhere, together. We need other churches as well as each other within our church to be Christ's body here on earth, to demonstrate his love, his grace, his forgiveness, his acceptance to the world. We are to be a demonstration of the unity that exists between God the Father, Spirit, and Son. Our life as a church comes from being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, and we should be growing to be more like Jesus. Correct nutrition is vital to growth, and that links in with our gospel reading from John 6. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray, give us each day our daily bread, reflecting our dependence on God for our physical needs. But Jesus taught the crowds that he was the bread of life. They needed to depend on him for life in all its fullness, not just for day-to-day existence. Each communion service is a reminder of this, as suggested later on in John chapter 6, but it's more than just that. Jesus is saying that in coming to him and trusting him as our life source, we can find the satisfaction and fulfillment of a life lived in relationship with our loving God, both now and eternally. Will our prayer be like that of the people then, who said, Sir, give us this bread always. Then we can be strengthened to play our part and to share that life with others. So let's help one another to be the best that we can be, as individual members of Christ's team and as a team functioning together. And please, let's not just be local, but global, supporting one another in our wider benefits and our deanery, and remembering fellow Christians across the world, so that, as Paul wrote at the end of our reading, as each part does its own special work, it will help the other parts grow so that the whole body or team is healthy and growing and full of love. May that be our prayer. I would encourage you to read the first 16 verses of Ephesians 4 again, perhaps with the team picture in your mind as well as the body. As each part does its own special work, it will help the other parts grow so that the whole body or team is healthy and growing and full of love. Amen. We stand to declare our common faith in Jesus Christ. I ask, do you believe and trust in God the Father? We believe and trust in him, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? We believe and trust in Jesus, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? We believe and trust in the one who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
In the power of that Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We will be using the second bidding this morning to the bidding, Lord, hear us. Responses, Lord, graciously hear us. As the traveling people of God, we pray for a deepening hunger for the things of God, for the bread of life. Help us, Lord, to loose our grip on all the wants and expectations which prevent us from moving forward in your way. Help us to recognize our own gifts and to use them in your service. Help us to recognize the gifts in others and to encourage them in love. Help us to play our part in the furtherance of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As brothers and sisters with the whole of creation, we pray for our respect and reverence among all people, regardless of wealth or status, for the responsible sharing of the world's resources and consideration for the natural world in our fragile and beautiful planet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the hungry, for those who hunger after justice, freedom, and peace. For those who hunger after food, medicine, and shelter. those who hunger after employment, empowerment, and education. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the hungry, for those who hunger after health and wholeness. for those who hunger after comfort and company, for those who hunger after reassurance and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the hungry. For those who hunger after forgiveness and reconciliation. For those who hunger after meaning and purpose. For those who hunger after faith and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus is the bread come down from heaven that brings life to the world. In his name, we pray for all who hunger in any way. And as we remember with love those who have journeyed through physical death, we pray that, nourished by the bread of life, they may travel on eagles' wings into the brightness of eternal life. We remember especially Benjamin Orton, Kathleen Wass, and their families, friends, and all who mourn them. Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, that when we meet in his name and pray according to his mind, you will be among us and hear our prayer. In your love and mercy, fulfill our desires and give us your greatest gift, which is to know you, the only true God, and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
And we stand for the peace. Lord, you are the bread of heaven, giving life to the world. Come, refresh, renew, restore us, and give us your peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We share that peace one with another. Peace to those online, peace, peace here and elsewhere. O thou who at thy Eucharist didst pray, our offertory hymn. Unite in offering our gifts as we offer these gifts on God's table. Generous God, 
Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, at your table we present this money, symbol of the work you have given us to do. Use it, use us, in the service of your world, to the glory of your name. Amen. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood. Gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For giving and restoring, God, we thank you and praise you because you make the gifts of your creation into the means of our redemption and you turn our fallen folly into the occasion of your risen glory. In Christ the Lamb you gave us everything you had. Though we strayed from your ways and killed your Holy One, yet you set before us this gracious banquet in which that crucified and risen Lamb reconciles us with you. And so we live in gratitude for your mercy and in praise of your grace, joining the company of heaven in their constant hymn. Faithful Father, in Christ you give us the food that will never perish but endures for eternal life. Give us this bread always, that coming to you your people will never be hungry, and believing in you your people will never be thirsty. Bless us with the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, that this bread and this wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who at supper with his disciples took bread and gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all, make your church humble, gentle and patient, living a life worthy of its calling. You summon apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Empower your people for service and build your church up in love. Draw all who look to you with hope into unity of faith, growing together into the full stature of Christ. Renew your servants in the gifts of ministry and bless any who labor and are heavy laden by surrounding them 
with the joyous companionship of your saints, until all who share in one Lord, one faith, and one baptism are one in unity before your throne, everlasting God, Trinity of perpetual peace. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. As this bread is broken, so may we be broken. As Christ was broken and resurrected, so may we be made whole. So let us draw near with faith to receive all that God offers us through the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us share together in remembrance that Christ died and lives for us today and be fed by his spiritual gifts freely offered us, the gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I will, as usual, pass among you with the body of Christ for those who normally take it. If you don't normally take it, then please just indicate to me and I will offer God's blessing upon you. And may I remind those online of the prayer to be said during communion, if you wish to, which brings about a spiritual communion that we are all united at this most precious time.
the body of Christ, bread of life. The blood of Christ shed for us all. And we unite in the words of the prayer after communion, saying, You have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God for ever and ever. Amen. So you can relax for a moment or two as we come to the notices. I have to say, I don't know about you, but after last week when we were just warming up really this morning, I was getting goosebumps during the Gloria. I was thinking, wow, singing is really good. So well done, everyone. We are beginning to get back to where we should be in our praises of God. We have a... Uh, Bands of marriage, and unexpected bands of marriage, but a nice one, all the same, uh, to be read for James Shred and Amy Glover, both of Repton. This is for the first time of asking, so if anyone knows any reason why in law they should not marry each other, you are to declare it. And we pray for all those preparing for marriage and indeed for baptism at this time, asking God's blessing upon them. In our notices, well, Ruth has preached about teamwork, the Ephesians reading being about working as a team, and of course, she has for the last few years been emailing the messy church team. Indeed, indeed, we can't get away from it. Uh, We put out the appeal on the notices last week about help for Messy Church, acknowledging it would really struggle if people didn't come forward. I know one or two have already offered to fill certain of those roles, so if you do feel so moved as to be able to help out at Messy Church, then do have a word with Ruth, please. Most important, thank you. Uh, We mentioned last week, and it's now in print there, the worship that we'll be offering uh, from September onwards until perhaps APCM time next year when it will be reviewed just as we are continually continually reviewing the COVID situation. Uh, That's what we'll be offering over the coming months. So a step up in the right direction there, indeed. And also on here, most important, and Ruth again mentioned one or two individuals who have been struggling with their mental health, uh, not just as a result of the intensity of the sporting life that they follow, I'm sure, but everything else in life. And we referred you to that post-lockdown anxiety NHS site last week. Do recommend that. It's very simple, very straightforward, but very helpful. I'm using some of that myself. And as it says there, if you can't go online and find that, then Rebecca will help you, of course. I don't think there's anything else I wish to specifically mention to you. Is there anything else from anyone else, Stephen? Or anything, George? No, that's fine. That's lovely. Other than to say there will be the opportunity for coffee and a biscuit. I saw a biscuit there. Afterwards, for those who feel comfortable staying, if you're not comfortable staying, then I'll be at the church door to have a brief word with you, of course. But if you do feel comfortable, then please stay for that time of fellowship. Thank you. Let us stand.
going to use the blessing on the order of service this day. May the light of Christ pierce the darkness of the world. May the love of Christ lift your spirits and gladden each day. May the peace of Christ fill your hearts and minds. May Christ our Saviour walk by your side today and all your days. And the blessing of our eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and with you now and forevermore. Amen. Onward, Christian soldiers.
let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.